Hello, in this brief presentation we'll talk about ideal versus practical low-pass filters. We'll discuss low-pass filter characteristics that are optimized for frequency domain measurements and also low-pass filters that are optimized for time domain and transient measurements. So an ideal low-pass filter would look like this where we have uh, gain in the pass band of the filter um, that's tightly controlled. Um, at when we reach the cutoff frequency, we have infinite slope, um, attenuation slope to the stop band, and then the stop band will have will, will not let anything uh, pass through. The practical filter, practical low pass filter, introduces a transition region, and that's a region uh, between the pass band and the stop band where the filter uh, progresses in um, increasing uh, attenuation um, or decreasing gain to the stop band of the filter. And all practical filters require a transition region to, in order to uh, mathematically realize the filter. Um, the filter also may have uh, may not be perfectly flat in the pass band. It may have some ripple, what we call ripple. And in the stop band, it'll have finite uh, stop band attenuation. It doesn't completely and totally reject signals, but it does so with a finite amount of uh, of gain. Some filter types we'll be discussing for this presentation. Uh, the Butterworth filter, which is a familiar filter characteristic. The elliptic um, and flat mode elliptic filters. The Bessel, which is another uh, familiar characteristic. And the modified Bessel, or pulse mode filter, which is uh, a term coined by precision filters to describe the modified Bessel that we've uh, developed. These two plots are plots of uh, Butterworth filters, and on the same plot we have a four-pole, six-pole, and eight-pole Butterworth filter. Recall the number of poles is the order of the denominator of the transfer function of the filter, and the number of poles also uh, ties directly into the complexity of the hardware uh, needed to impl implement the filter. A four-pole Butterworth requires about half as much hardware as a, an eight-pole, a sharper eight-pole Butterworth filter. So these have what, what is called a maximally flat passband. This is the ma mathematical representation of the filter. It has a mathematically or maximally flat passband and a monotonic roll-off equal uh, to um, six times n dB per octave, where n is a number of poles. Um, that's the asymptote that the um, slope of the filter approaches. So an eight, eighth order um, Butterworth filter has 48 dB per octave of attenuation slope. The lower graph in this chart um, represents a zoomed in picture of the passband of the filter, and as you see you see as we add more poles to the filter, uh, it does a better approximation of a uh, maximally flat passband. The 8-pole Butterworth um, is flatter uh, for a longer duration of the passband than the 4-pole, as you can see. All of them converge at, at uh, unity normalized frequency in this plot. That's the cutoff frequency, and they all pass through minus 3 uh, dB at the uh, cutoff frequency. So elliptic filters, or elliptical filters, have equiripple amplitude response in the pass band and equiripple uh, response in the stop band as well. Uh, as a designer, you can specify the precise amount of pass band ripple you want, and uh, the amount of stop band attenu attenuation you want, and then a unique uh, filter characteristic given the number of poles that you're going to use to implement it is defined um, by the pass band ripple and stop band ripple. So you have an infinite number of possibilities uh, for elliptic filters. 
And the uniqueness of an elliptic filter is that it has the sharpest uh, transition from pass band to stop band of any filter. So here at uh, Precision Filters, we offer proprietary uh, filter characteristics that we refer to as a flat mode elliptic filter. And this uh, mode of elliptic filter has uh, um, maximally flat passband, zero passband uh, ripple, like a, a Butterworth filter, except even better than a Butterworth filter. Yet uh, the roll off of the maximally flat elliptic is, is much sharper and much more selective than the Butterworth filter. And you've got two charts here to, to observe. Uh, the top chart, uh, you can see the eighth order PF uh, flat mode filter is indicated and compared to an eight pole uh, Butterworth filter. And you can see the, the slope of the LP8F is it's much sharper and more selective than the, the Butterworth filter. In fact, it's down 80 dB at 1.7 times the program cutoff frequency. That would be what we called the shape factor of the filter. The 8-pole Butterworth filter is down 80 dB at 3.16 times the cutoff frequency. So quite a difference in attenuation slope. And similarly, for the 4-pole counterparts, we can see the, the LP4F flat mode filter is, is more selective than the Butterworth. As we zoom into the passband in the second graph, um, you see the eighth order um, elliptic filter, the LP8F, is flatter for a longer uh, uh, or greater percentage of the, the passband than the corresponding eight pole Butterworth. And similarly, um, the four pole flat mode filter and the, and the four pole Butterworth, um, they have nearly identical uh, characteristics. So when we talked about the notion of the ideal filter, we were mainly concerned with the amplitude response in that the pass pan wanted to be as flat as possible and the transition from pass band to stop band as sharp as possible. But there is another important criteria and we've already touched on the phase response and that is that the filter exhibit uh, phase that varies linearly with respect to frequency. Why do we want linear phase? Well a filter that has a linear phase property imparts equal delay to all frequencies present in the passband or across the passband. So that is uh, if you have a, a waveform that is spectrally rich, has lots of uh, frequency content in the passband, and you're interested in preserving its time domain wave shape, it's extremely important that all those frequency components that comprise a waveform are delayed by the same amount of time as they pass through the filter. A filter or transfer function that has nonlinear phase will impart different delays uh, to frequencies across the passband of the filter. Um, if you have, again, uh, an input signal that's spectrally rich, has lots of frequency content, um, you will see different delays uh, to those frequencies that comprise a signal across the passband. Those different delays will uh, produce what we call waveform distortion. A measurement of how good um, a filter's uh, linear phase property is, is uh, called group delay. And group delay is defined as a negative derivative of the phase with respect to frequency. So if a filter has linear phase, then it stands to reason that the derivative of a filter with linear phase is a constant. Hence, uh, we refer to uh, filters with constant group delay. That's uh, equivalent to saying that the filter has linear phase. The Bessel filter, which you may have studied, is a a well-known filter uh, in the family of all pole filters in that it is designed to maximize or optimize the phase linearity for a given order or given number of poles. Um, the Bessel has almost perfect phase linearity in the passband and in exchange for that the amplitude response is quite broadly rounded when compared to a Butterworth or 
a uh, maximally flat elliptic filter, which we, we looked at a few slides earlier. Precision Filters um, has developed a transfer function that we call uh, the pulse mode or pulse mode linear phase filters. The pulse mode filters have amplitude response similar uh, to their Bessel counterparts. Um, and the passband, in fact, is, is nearly identical. But in studying the, the top chart on the left, you can see that the transition rate of the LP8P pulse mode filter is much more abrupt than its 8-pole Bessel counterpart. Uh, the pulse mode filter is down 80 dB at about 3.5 times the program cutoff frequency, while the 8-pole Bessel is down uh, 80 dB at 6 times, so much uh, more selective, uh, abrupt uh, transition region. So back to the notion of group delay. If we look at the group delay for the LP8F flat mode filter and the LP8P pulse mode filter, uh, precision filters uh, characteristics, we can see uh, at, with the red arrow that the group delay of the LP8F is not constant as we go through the passband. The passband here is defined from 0 to 1 in normalized frequency. So the fact that the group delay is not constant implies that this filter does not have linear phase and it will not impart the same delay uh, to all frequencies in the passband of the filter, i.e. it's a poor choice uh, when we're analyzing waveforms in the time domain and wave shape reproduction is important. Looking at the green arrow, that's pointing to the group delay of the pulse mode filter. And we can see in the passband from 0 to 1 that the, the group delay is, is a constant. This filter has linear phase. It will impart the same time delay input to output to all frequencies in the passband of the filter. And it will preserve wave shapes in the time domain. A term uh, we refer, refer to as phase distortion is the deviation of the actual phase versus frequency curve uh, when compared to an ideal characteristic of linear phase. And here we have two plots. Uh, the one on the left is the phase distortion of the elliptic um, flat mode filter. Um, its phase response, again, is, is nonlinear across the passband. And we can see uh, the phase distortion curve grows from, from minimal phase distortion up to about half the cutoff frequency. Maybe we have five degrees at half the cutoff frequency. And then it starts to get significant uh, where at the cutoff frequency at one, um, we've got uh, about 100 degrees of, of phase distortion. On the right, uh, we're looking at the pulse mode, LP8P, and it has linear phase and the phase distortion curve is uh, less than 0.05 degrees across the passband. So, so excellent phase linearity for the pulse mode characteristic. So to summarize, we introduced the concept of the ideal low pass filter and then discussed practical low pass filters that are realizable in hardware. The first type of practical low pass filter we discussed were those that were optimized for amplitude response and those are good choice for uh, measurements such as uh, frequency domain analysis and fast Fourier transform analysis where uh, the amplitude response, passband flatness, and uh, sharp selectivity is important. In the second part we talked about filters that had linear phase and how linear phase is a property that's uh, needed for um, faithful wave shape reproduction. Uh, the linear phase filter is, is a, a good choice when you're, you're making uh, measurements in the time domain and your analysis is in the time domain. Thank you for listening.